Hi everybody, it's Liz Kettle of Textiles West and I'm here with the Maker in Residence project for P Pikes Peak Library District. Um, and I hope you um, have picked up a kit. Your kit will come like this in a bag and it's got everything you need in it. So I will go over the contents and give you an idea of what you can do. So we have eight different patterns for you to choose from. And today I chose the house pattern. So when you open your kit, you'll find It'll be kind of like this. You'll have a little packet and it will have your embroidery floss. It will have a needle. And it will have the pieces that you need to do your collage. Now, I want to talk briefly about these pieces because um, on the back, you can see one side is shiny and the other side is not. The side that is shiny has a fusible web on it. It's a heat activated fusible web. So you can easily keep your pieces down without having to use pins. It's very hard to hand stitch on something small um, without with pins because then you end up poking yourself all the time. So um, each of these pieces has that fusible web on it. So you need to be careful when you go to iron it down that you make sure that the fusible web side is down and that it, you're your backing fabric is this little piece of flannel. So you can put your pieces down and make sure they don't hang over the edge or they will um, get on your ironing cover. You don't want that. So I'm going to put all my pieces down here, making sure you can see what I'm doing. And this is the house. Now the house is one pattern that has um, a little bit more flexibility. The Columbine you can put just about anywhere on the background square. The Garden of the Gods one, um, you have a little bit less flexibility because the pieces are kind of stuck. I mean you have to, they fit together like a puzzle more than the Columbine or the house. So you could do your house on either side and your tree on either side. I'm just going to follow the pattern for this one so you can see. I'm going to put my pieces down and you can do this in two steps or in multiple steps. You could do it all at one time, or you can um, put with, by putting everything down where you want it. I think that's what I'll do. I think that's the easiest. Or you can do things one at a time. Now, on some of the patterns, you'll have pieces like this tree branch that are going to hang off a little bit. And that's OK. Just try not to press with your iron on that side. My door. I think I'll put my door over here and my little window. Sometimes it's not easy to tell which side is the side that goes down, so make sure you double check before you iron. Now in just a minute I'll talk to you about um, not ironing. So, And then what you're going to do is put your iron flat down on it and count to like six or seven slowly, not too fast. And then you're going to move it over. So you want to make sure the iron covers the whole thing. You don't want to move your iron back and forth because that might push your pieces out of from where you placed them. So we've got it nice and ironed. And give it a minute to cool because um, it gets hot. So you don't want to burn your fingers. So now all my pieces are down so that um, they're all stuck. So now I can easily sew them down. Um, now you don't have to iron them down. If you don't have an iron, you can just sew them right on without you, without ironing them because um, the sticky part is just helpful for when you're sewing. But you can just put, add one piece, like put the sky down and stitch around that, and then put the grass and stitch around that, and then put the house, stitch around that, and just build it up that way without um, having to use the iron if you don't have the iron. Now I want to talk a minute about um, the embroidery floss that we gave you. We tried to match the colors and we do want you to think creatively as well. If you don't um, if you have other fabrics you want to put in, you could do that. Or if you have other threads you want to use, please feel free to use anything that you have at home. You can use markers to add patterns and colors. Um, a lot of people put the, did the center of the Columbine with, um, with markers faster than stitching. So this is embroidery floss that we've given you. And let's, let me go to a little closer up picture so you can see how I'm going to use this. 
So embroidery floss is strands. It's stranded. I don't know if you how well you can see that in the video. Let me put this down here. So when you open it, there's six different strands in each little yarn. So you can use all six strands, or you can use one or two strands or three strands. Depends on how thick you want your stitches to be. So the way to separate out the strands, you can't just say, I want three and pull three and pull it apart. You'll just get a tangled mess. You really need to pull one at a time from the end. Just pull it out like that. And it will bunch up on this end. And on this one, I want to use three, but I'm still going to pull each one out by itself. I have tried many times to get it to be able to separate three at a time, and it just never works. I always end up with a mess. So even though this feels like it takes a minute, you'll be happy in the end because it takes too long. Now you want to thread your needle, and we have um, given you chenille needles because they have a little bit bigger eye. Oops. Get my ends a little straighter there. So I usually thread my needle before I floss it. And you can do the old age old trick of um, wetting the ends to get them to stay together. Watch, of course, I'm going to have a hard time threading it because I'm on camera. I'm like a pro threader normally. I can just stick it right in there, but uh, that's probably better because you'll <laughs> You'll feel more confident if you're like, well, she had a hard time threading that needle too. So there we go, I got it threaded. Now on one end, you wanna make a knot. Some of you have probably been taught that you sew with your threads double like this, and you knot this end. But that is really just like if you're putting on buttonhole buttons um, to make it extra strong for this kind of um, embroidery decorative work, you don't wanna do that. You wanna just work with the single strand. So you're going to make a knot in this end, and there's lots of different ways you can make a knot. The easiest one I can demonstrate, though, is to put it like this on your finger, wrap it around so it makes an X there, and put your finger, your thumb right on top, and then go to the front and push the needle up towards your the tip of your nail. You don't want to go down because then you'll stab your cuticle and that will hurt. So you can do that twice. Oops. And then you just kind of roll it off your finger and hold on to it, and then you'll have a nice knot. That's the easiest one to um, show on camera. The other one is just where you twist it around, twist it off your finger, and sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, the other one is much easier to use. And then um, we have some videos on how to, uh, on the different stitches you can use. But we want you to have fun with it. Now I can see you again. So, um, but like I said, we want you to have fun with it and add your own expression. If you have other fabrics at home you want to use, you can add those. If you want to draw on it, you can do that. You can add beads or buttons or whatever kind of embellishment you have. Um, we're just really excited to see how you add your creativity to our designs. Um, so this is my house. I'll go stitch it now. And pick up your kit at Pikes Peak Libraries. Um, they'll have a, a list of all the libraries that will have our kits. And uh, if you have any problems at all, please don't hesitate to contact us. The best way right now is email because our studios are not open to the public so that we keep our classrooms safe for our students. So the best way is email. It's connect at textilewest.org. And let us know whatever questions you have. You can also um, find us on Facebook and ask through Messenger there. We usually check that every day so that we can help you um, solve your problems. If you need something else, like you need, you lost your needle or the dog or the cat took away all your floss and you need some more, just let us know and we'll, we'll arrange a time to meet you so that we can get you some more supplies. All right, have fun making and we can't wait to see what you do.